Welcome back, everyone. Let's uh, get to it and wrap up um, this uh, carbonyl chemistry we have on our hands. Okay, so uh, the first transformation we're going to look at is producing aldehydes in primary alcohols uh, using uh, reducing agents that are you know typically thought of as pretty strong, so like a lithium aluminum hydride uh, type of reagent, but Instead of having, you know, just um, straight up hydrogens attached to that aluminum center, um, we're actually going to have some bulkier substituents like a diisobutyl. Okay, so diisobutyl is going to look something like this. <clears throat> um, directly attached to that aluminum, right? So in other words, some pretty bulky substituents there where the business end is, and then you have two hydrogens, and then, <clears throat> um, you know, that's going to be negatively charged, and then you're going to have that lithium to stabilize the charge, okay? So they're gonna be, it's going to be a very bulky um, group, but also notice that um, it's going to be at a very low temperature, so you're going to have that kind of control. And, then, and um, just to... Uh, make clear this is going to be one stage of the reduction process so in other words it's not going to go all the way to an alcohol like it would if you were to run it at let's say room temperature okay now um, also acknowledge that you know uh, acid chlorides the type of substrates that you're starting out here with on the left are going to be highly reactive okay so <clears throat> notice that at room temperature, you're going to get two stages of reduction, okay? Um, so that's really the difference. So let's take a, t let's just take a look at some other uh, substrates here without looking at our uh, answers, which I'm sure you've already seen and you already have um, pointed out. But um, let's look at problems A, C, and D. Okay, so uh, this is on, pro, uh, sorry, uh, problem 20.48 on page 1041. Okay, so we have uh, a conjugated ether, it appears. So, um, sorry, ester rather. So this ester is actually going to get reduced once because you have a very bulky reducing agent and you have a very low temperature. So in other words, it's going to go to the first um, reduction, which is going to go straight to an aldehyde. Okay, so what I'm going to point out here on the left is going to be circled, basically whatever is going to be substituted, and then what's going to be on the right is going to be squared off. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so that's pretty straightforward. Um, also here, notice how uh, this is NH4Cl. A blue marker here, real quick. To cover my tracks. Okay, so <clears throat> so that's going to be a weak base, or sorry, a weak acid um, um, proton source. Okay, um, and now for C, uh, we have another type of substituent here. So we have some uh, a an acid chloride that's similar to what you see in part A. Now, uh, LTBA is, again, another one of those bulky uh, substituent, um, sorry, reducing agents that you could use. And using that at negative 78 degrees, again, very low temperature, you're going to get simply just one reduction. So in other words, you're just essentially swapping out a chlorine, ion, um, chlorine leaving group for a hydrogen, so something that's more stable. Okay, <clears throat> okay and then lastly... Um, if you were to take another acid chloride similar to what's in C for your substrate, react it out with lithium aluminum hydride, which is, which is again a, um, um, a, a reducing agent, it's going to be a lot smaller, right? And if you did it at room temperature, it's going to go from the aldehyde all the way over to the uh, primary alcohol, okay? Um... And once again, this NH4Cl is just simply a, a weak acid um, proton source. 
Okay. <clears throat> so uh, the next transformation that we're going to look at here is essentially just adding more alkyl groups to, um, let's say, a ketone or, um, you know, in uh, to an aldehyde. Now we know that for Grignard reagents, they're going to attack not just the carbonyls that I just previously mentioned. It's also going to attack epoxides, nitriles, as well as uh, deprotonating uh, protic hydrogen. So that's something to watch out for. Uh, so, you know, from alcohols or carboxylic acids that generally have protic hydrogens attached to them. Okay, um, so what happens when you actually have two equivalents of Grignard with twice reactive electrophiles? Twice reactive meaning, you know, you're going to go from one step to the next step, right? So with this step for, or with this process for D with uh, reduction, I'm going one, two. So in other words, the leaving group goes and then an additional uh, nucleophile ends up there. So H minus, you can think of it the same way is how we're going to be looking at uh, Grignard reagents in the next um, page over. Okay, so I've moved on to the next page here, and I want you guys to work on these next three examples. Um, so just to um, show you what's going on here, we have a, a ketone, or not a ketone, but a um, acid anhydride. And we have a less stable or a more stable anion right here with um, this basically benzoate that would leave. Okay, so um, if this type of Grignard reagent is going to react not once but twice, it's actually going to form um, some type of alcohol. So, see what you get for these next three reactions and uh, pause it for a few minutes and, and try to work that out and then um, we'll, uh, we'll see the answers. Okay, so once again, uh, these are just typical, um, you know, Grignard reagent uh, conditions. Sorry, these, these two are. Um, this is not a Grignard reagent, my apologies. Okay, so the first addition here is again going to happen with a CH3. It's going to kick off this uh, <clears throat> benzoate leaving group. Okay, so then you'll wind up with a ketone as the first equivalent product. So if you have an additional CH3 and then a weak acid uh, to follow with it as a proton source, you're going to get T-butanol. Probably just easier to buy. Oh, okay, so uh, next example we have uh, once again an ester. So again, this is an acid anhydride. This is an ester. So now we have a, um, an ethyl Grignard reagent that's gonna react out with it. First equivalent product that you see right here. Okay, so that's going to, uh, I, that's not gonna leave, right? It's gonna stick around. Ethyl is a poor leaving group. So if we have an additional ethyl group attacking this, and we have a, um, um, I'm sorry, a uh, proton source, I'm sorry, it's been a long day, proton source uh, attaching on to where this O- is going to be, we're going to get this type of alcohol, okay? So in other words, two ethyl groups have uh, amended onto that carbon uh, reactive center. Okay, moving on to the next uh, Example here, we have lithium, a uh, lithium cuprate reagent in THF, so it's just a um, polar A product solvent. So, are we going to attack here or are we going to attack where the CL is? Well, actually, the CL is going to be a better leaving group. So, remember, we would think of um, we would typically think of this being an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Well, the difference is is that this is really going to um, act powerful and, and sponge up uh, that chlorine, okay? And as a result, you're going to have a uh, substitution there with the, um, with the um, uh, acid chlorine, sorry. Okay, so <clears throat> in other words, you're not going to have 
uh, what is referred to is uh, conjugated addition, you're going to have a different product entirely. You're going to form a ketone from an acid chloride. <clears throat> okay. Uh, here's another example. So remember, pay attention to those uh, protic hydrogens, okay? That uh, methyl group is going to basically just strip that thing off and, um, you know, you're going to have... <laughs> Uh, a carboxylate, and then you're also going to have just methane that's going to leave. Okay, so it's going to turn into a gas, and goodbye. Okay, so let's look at uh, another <clears throat> set of problems on page um, 1041, problem 20.49. Okay, so we're going to be looking at uh, problems A, B, and D. Okay, uh, so I'll give you a few minutes to... Work with that information, pause, and see what you can come up with. Okay. Now, uh, not unlike the esters we saw above, we're going to have uh, two ethyl groups that are going to substitute. Uh, one by removing this um, ethoxy group to form a ketone, and then the second uh, to form a tertiary uh, alcohol. Again, HCl is going to be the proton source to uh, protonate that and make your organic product. Okay, so it's going to look something like so. Remember, these boxes are just to denote uh, what the change is. Okay, now um, next one here. So we have once again a Cl uh, leaving group, which is kind of a sitting duck, and you know that double bond is bonds removed from. Uh, that carbonyl, so in other words, it's not going to be conjugated, it's not going to be reactive, okay? So, in other words, <clears throat> um, we're going to have uh, basically a formation of an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone. Well, if there were a second equivalent, it could possibly amend to this, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just go with the stoichiometry that we have here and, and leave it be, okay? Uh, next step is uh, this diphenyl, um, I guess, acetic anhydride here. So you have two equivalents of CH3 MGBR. Again, that's going to be um, an uh, Grignard reagent, a methyl Grignard reagent. So it's, in other words, it's going to um, replace this, you see right here, this benzoate group. And then uh, to form a, uh, a methyl ketone, and then an additional one is going to come in, and you're going to get um, this type of product. Okay, so two methyls amended to that uh, reactive carbon to form a tertiary alcohol. Okay, so last few uh, mechanisms. We're going to go over a few mechanisms here kind of unavoidable just to show you the uh, what's going on here. So we have weak nukes. We're, we're looking at nucleophilic additions with uh, weak nucleophiles. So it's going to introduce some kind of charge separation. We have two neutral species and we're going to have to have some instability um, in our intermediates to, to form our overall product. Okay, so the first step is going to be to uh, add to the carbonyl and that of course is going to uh, result in a charge separation negative charge where the oxygen is partial positive where the oxygen amended from uh, ethanol and then you're going to have a second equivalent of ethanol that behaves as a base to remove that hydrogen okay so um, <clears throat> then that uh, oxygen is nice and happy Okay, so that uh, negative charge on that oxygen, one of those lone pairs is going to come back down. It's going to kick off that um, chlorine most definitely. And then you're going to get that substitution uh, with a um, ester group that forms. So remember the esters are going to be more stable species than uh, your... Uh, your acid chlorides. And also, this is just 
the conjugate acid of the second equivalent that was behaving as a base to remove that hydrogen. Okay. So let's think back to the hierarchy of stable carbonyls and uh, let's look at some examples in um, the back of the text. So in problem um, 21.39 on uh, page 1094, um, let's go over a few examples that are s similar to what we see here uh, in this mechanism. Okay, so <clears throat> example A, we have uh, an alcohol that's going to behave as a nuke. Okay, so um, I've marked that right there underneath where it says nuke. Notice how I've circled the good leaving group, which is going to be an acetate leaving group. Okay, so <clears throat> this OH group is essentially going to attack right at this carbonyl, kick um, these electrons up like you see here, right? And then a second equivalent of this is going to come around and behave as a weak base to remove that uh, protic hydrogen that's right there. Okay, so that's going to become neutral. And now that we have that uh, negative charge on that oxygen, those lone pair is going to come back down <clears throat> and uh, establish a pi bond and kick off that acetate group. So acetate uh, is a leaving group. Okay, so then we're going to form this particular product that you see, or cannot see right now, but will, right here. Okay, so in other words, OAC has left. All right, so uh, let's look at problem C. Okay, so we have a weak base right here. Uh, we have a secondary amine, which is going to be weakly basic. Uh, weakly nucleophilic as well, but remember this is a very powerful electrophile. So in other words, um, you're going to form some kind of intermediate here with a quaternary amine. That hydrogen is going to be protic. Um, and now we notice that pyridine, which is actually a good base, there's a pKa of about 5 in its conjugate acid form, it's going to pick that hydrogen up. Those electrons are going to go right back to the nitrogen home where they need to be. And uh, then from the double or sorry, with the lone pair electrons coming back down from the oxygen, it's going to kick that Cl group right off, and you're going to have that substitution, and you're going to form a tertiary amide that you see right there. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to look at um, some substitution from some weak bases uh, based upon um, weak bases to strong nucleophiles. Um, so this is a retrosynthetic perspective. Uh, if we look on page, sorry, problem 2140 on page 1094, uh, uh, what we can form um, <clears throat> from, uh, or if, if, if we want to form this carbonyl, or sorry, this uh, carboxylic acid rather, we're going to have to sub uh, substitute a acid chloride starting material. So these are both going to be starting materials, and water is going to be most effective. I don't know if I uh, told you guys in a lecture, but acid chlorides are extremely labile, and they'll react readily with moisture. So in other words, it's going to render this pretty much a carboxylic acid if it has any exposure to moisture. Okay, um, a little bit of a different story here for forming this tertiary amine. Um, remember that you're going to need some kind of equivalent in terms of um, a weak base that can behave as not a nucleophile, right? So in other words, something that's really ideal for that. Uh, for for doing a secondary amine substitution like this is to actually use pyridine like uh, we did in a previous example on the previous page. 
Okay, so in other words, you'd be starting out with that acid chloride as a starting material. Okay. Now, uh, converting sluggish electrophiles more stable to reactive electrophiles. Uh, this is a very cornerstone in organic chemistry too. Uh, essentially just converting a carboxylic acid to a much more reactive acid chloride. So um, that's to be executed by using SOCl2, so thionyl chloride. Um, you can also use PCl3, but you're not going to do it in as great of a yield. So typically SOCl2 is a safer bet. You know, you can get maybe in the 80s or above in percentage um, conversion. Okay, so let's look at uh, problems uh, A through C in 21.46 and see what kind of conversions we get with the following um, <clears throat> uh, compounds. So again, we're looking at uh, retrosynthesis here. So in other words, SOCl2 is going to effectively form that uh, Cl or acid chloride group that you see there. So sorry if this seems a little redundant, guys, but I kind of have to beat it into your heads. Okay. Um, so again, you can really just imagine this as being an OH group in lieu of a Cl, and that would be uh, what you would transform using thionyl chloride. Okay. So any of these could be used later, you know, uh, down the road. Maybe not this, but um, this, definitely this. You could use for, let's say, um, uh, Friedel-Crafts isolation or something like that. Okay. Although this would probably self-react. This would definitely self-react. Uh, I'm not so sure about that one because it has the ester. But uh, nonetheless, this is what the starting material would look like. Okay, once again, uh, carbon, or sorry, carboxylic acids. Okay, so this next strategy is simply uh, making a secondary alcohol, which is a really sluggish poor leaving group, into a good leaving group while retaining configuration of substrate. So in other words, if it's R and you want to have something substitute as S, this is a good way to go about it, right? So, uh, tosyl chloride, abbreviated as TSCl, you might have seen tosic acid before, okay? Um, that's a strong electrophile, okay? So, it has a pretty serious uh, business end with a leaving group of its uh, Cl, okay? Uh, so, the secondary alcohol is going to act as a weak nucleophile to attack that complex. So, um, we'll show you some examples here, not necessarily of tosyl chloride itself, but there are some other um, types of species that are comparable and have a very low pKa as well. <clears throat> okay, so in uh, problem 21.49 on page 1095, let's go over the mechanism here. So this is the business end I was referring to. You have that OH with a lone pair that's going to attack. Notice how that OH is sticking out of the plane of the page. Okay, so um, then you have... Once again, pyridine is going to behave as a weak base, which is going to be strong enough to remove that hydrogen there. Okay. And uh, so that oxygen is henceforth going to be uh, neutral. Okay. So then we have a pair of, or lone pair of electrons that are going to come back down and kick that Cl leaving group right off. Okay. So now we have a wonderful leaving group. Now, once again, that pKa of the conjugate acid of this, this sucker right here is going to be negative 13. So that is the lowest that you're going to actually see in that pKa chart, uh, which, you know, you can essentially now look at uh, in your free time, right? Or any other time during your exam or quizzes or whatever else. All right, so... Um, Let's look at another strategy. strategy. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at making amino acid analogs. So these are all monomeric, right? It's not we're not going to be building uh, beta sheets or or, um, or alpha helices or anything like that. We're just talking about monomers here. Okay, so um, 
that transformation simply involves a carboxylic acid. Okay, so amino acids involve an acid as well as um, uh, an amino group on the opposite end, right? So there's going to be the residue carbon where things branch off, uh, you know, right here. But that's also where the NH3 is, 3 is definitely going to amend. So <clears throat> that OH group there is actually going to leave. Okay, so the Br2 is going to um, substitute here with the aid of PCL3, which is going to act as a catalyst. Okay, and then water is going to come back around and uh, replace that OH uh, group again. So... And effectively, uh, Br2, if you want to look at the mechanism, it's going to be over there on page 1058. Uh, you can see that transformation, you know, in gory detail. Um, I'm not going to, you know, belabor you guys with the mechanism there. You can check it out for reference. I'm certainly not going to uh, hold your feet to the fire on, on how that's work, how that works, but at any rate, uh, NH3 is going to behave as a good nucleophile to kick that bromo group off where that substitution occurred at that alpha carbon. Okay, and then you're going to have uh, essentially uh, hydrogen transfer of some kind. Now, you also have an OH group right there, so that's going to be kind of labile too. So you have to get it somewhere in the pH of, you know, maybe... Uh, it's probably not going to look like that, honestly. It's probably going to look more like NH3 or something like that. So, Nonetheless, uh, you're going to get isoleucine from this type of transformation. Okay, So isoleucine is, a, um, is an amino acid you can look up in the first chapter. I'm sure it's in your biochemistry textbooks, etc. Okay, so this next... Um, Oxidation that I'm going to show you is um, actually somewhat of a blast from the past here. So you have MCPBA, which is typically thought of as uh, oxidizing alkene. So in other words, you would be forming an epoxide. And that's going to be happening via a concerted mechanism. This mechanism is going to be uh, reacting carbonyls or oxidizing ketones. Um, you can also oxidize um, other species like aldehydes and that kind of thing to carboxylic acids. But um, effectively, you're going to form an ester. Uh, so in other words, an oxygen is going to wedge in between this CO um, double bond and that, that uh, neighboring carbon. Okay, So um, essentially, you're going to get... This species right here and understand that <clears throat> so I'll earmark some of these hydro or these uh, carbons here so you know where things end up um, so essentially this oxygen is wedged in between uh, these two carbons okay so an acids needed to uh, catalyze the reaction this is just Methylene chloride is just going to be the solvent, but really the um, um, the reagent to pay attention to is MCPBA. This is really where the oxygen source comes from. O source. Okay. Now, uh, this particular ketone is a different story because you have an, a symmetric ketone on both sides here. So you have a methylene group here and a methylene group here. Here you have a methine group and then you have a methyl, methylene group on the right. So um, you're going to have to look at <clears throat> um, essentially what I wrote down over here. So see page 1094, they're going to tell you about migratory aptitude. That's the that's the uh, hot um, buzz term that the um, that uh, Cardi's book uh, says. Okay, um, you can look at some problems on page uh, t or problem twenty one sixty one for other examples. Um, <clears throat> so migratory aptitude essentially um, more inductive effect on one side, the better nuke 
carbon to amend to the new oxygen. So it seems kind of counterintuitive that a nucleophile carbon would amend to an oxygen, but um, that's if you, if you look at the mechanism, you can you can see how things look sort of uh, counterintuitive. Okay, so remember that no mechanisms can be directly proven, so this is just something that's theorized. Okay, so in other words, you're really going to see that substitution or that oxygen wedge its way in right over here. All right, moving on. Um, so let's look at another example of carbon-carbon bond formation. Now uh, we've we've seen um, <clears throat> some uh, aldol condensations up to this point. We've seen um, some Robinson annulation. So in other words, we've we've formed some rings from that. Uh, in this case, we're just using. Uh, cross aldol condensation that means we're using two different types uh, or sorry not cross aldol condensation cross Claisen condensation so Claisen is going to be specifically uh, geared towards ester groups okay so in other words two ester groups have to condense uh, using a type of uh, base that would be complementary to the leaving group, right? Because you're going to have some trans transesterification that's going to occur. So it's something to pay attention to for the exam. Winkity wink, hint, hint. All right. Now, um, so once you generate your anion here, uh, after that first step of proton removal, that uh, lone pair is going to behave as a nuke and come on in and uh, amend to that CO double bond and kick those uh, that um, that pi bond out to where the the uh, oxygen is. Okay, so then you're going to have an alkoxy anion. The lone pair is going to come down. It's going to kick off that uh, good, uh, well, okay leaving group. I wouldn't say it's anything special. Uh, OC, oh, you know, uh, ethoxy leaving group. Okay, and then you're going to establish that double bond, or sorry, you're going to establish that CC bond Okay. Now, um, if we're just gonna take a self con or, or a condensing react or Claisen condensation with two equivalents of the same species, you're effectively just gonna um, substitute one of these onto this alpha carbon, and um, this particular base or sorry, this particular. Um, I guess propoxy group is going to stick around. Okay, so again, you want to have a matching base to remove that hydrogen. Okay, so again, you're going to see uh, a ketone that branches off of there, uh, off of that alpha carbon. Okay, so this is just a boo boo I made. Please don't think I added an extra carbon there for no reason. Okay, um, all right, so now we'll move on to the Dykeman condensation. So that's going to be a cyclic uh, um, condensation. Effectively, one of these hydrogens is going to be removed, and uh, then that's just simply going to attack or have a means to reach over to that other reactive carbonyl and um, form a ring. Okay, so that's what you're going to see right there. And then remember, you're still going to be under basic conditions. So when you move from basic to acidic, that proton source is going to be there for this uh, lone pair to pick up and then, you know, go into uh, free neutral territory. Okay. Okay, so moving on into the next page, let's take a look at. Uh, problem 21.67 on page 1098, problems B and C. Give those a shot and uh, tell me what you come up with. Now remember that one of these is going to need to reach over uh, 
and attack the other ester, right? So we need to form some kind of uh, stable ring formation. Now for C, uh, it's a little bit of a different story because we have uh, an ester here and an ester here, but they're in equivalent. So one of them has to have a proton source in order to generate a good uh, nucleophile. So why don't we pause for about five minutes, see what you guys come up with for an answer. Okay, so we're back. All right, now, um, first thing to do is to deprotonate um, just alpha to this particular ester. Okay, so this is going to be the leaving group that gets uh, substituted once uh, the anion is formed and attacks. Okay, so then we're going to have that tetrahedral intermediate. Uh, the lone pair of electrons is going to come back to the carbon and uh, establish a double bond and kick off that OCH3. And that's going to form that uh, ketone bond that you see right there uh, that's cyclic. Okay, so in other words, that other ester is going to be hanging off on the side. This is kind of a dead giveaway for a Dykeman condensation, just FYI. Okay. Uh, now, for C, uh, the case is a crossed out, uh, crossed Claisen condensation. So, in other words, uh, again, we're going to be using a matching base uh, for a leaving group because you will happen to see some uh, evidence of transesterification. So, going to pluck off a proton off of this alpha carbon here, and um, this is going to be introduced as your electrophile. Okay. So notice how I've marked, earmarked this one and two. So that means that these phenyl groups are coming from one and two respectively. Okay, so in other words, this is the CC bond that gets established right here. Okay, so that is um, also a, sort of a smoking gun in terms of uh, a, uh, a crossed Claisen condensation. Okay, so melodic and acetoesters are uh, the last thing that we're going to look at for this exam cycle. Okay, uh, and forming ketones with alkyl halides while losing an ester. So in other words, um, you're going to actually introduce some kind of carbon source that you can either um, make a carboxylic acid out of or some kind of... Um, well, not necessarily a carboxylic acid, really more of an ester, diester, or um, some kind of ketone amended to that alkyl halide. So this is almost the same way you could think of in terms of, um, what was the uh, name reaction? Um, mm, it's not coming to me. But... Nonetheless, um, let's just, just move forward. Let's take a malonic ester, for, if for example. So this is the first one. Uh, so we have a simple malonic ester here. So we have some OH3, uh, leave, OCH3 leaving groups. We have OCH3 as a base. Okay. And then, so effectively, we're just going to remove this one proton here. And this is then going to act as a nucleophile to attack this bromo group here, okay, and then kick off the bromine. So you're going to have uh, substitution there in that middle carbon, right? Where that middle carbon is here. So that is going to be a methine carbon as a result. <clears throat> now, um, the next set of conditions that you see right here is you're going to go to basic. In other words, you want to hydrolyze uh, these OCH3 groups, right? And then that uh, H3O and, and heat, what that's going to do is actually drive off uh, this, decar or this uh, carboxylate. Okay, so effectively what that uh, acid's going to do is protonate, let's say, uh, this particular carbon here as what I've done. So once this uh, lone pair comes and picks off that particular hydrogen, these electrons are basically going to cascade 
to have full octets everywhere and you're going to generate CO2 that's going to leave. Okay, So then you're simply just going to have some kind of, so I'll put minus CO2 in the gas phase, so that's going to be an irreversible step. And then this uh, water, this uh, still hanging around, is going to pick up that hydrogen, take it back, and those lone pairs or those uh, electrons are going to go back to behaving as lone pairs for that carbonyl. Okay, meanwhile, uh, this negative charge is slightly stabilized, so it can um, behave as a base and remove um, that hydrogen. So, an effective uh, proton transfer has occurred with the presence of water here. So that is where a malonic ester is going to get you. It's basically going to give you a carboxylic acid amended to um, or an acetic acetic acid group essentially amended to um, an alkyl halide that you started out with as a substrate up here. Okay, so the acetoacetic ester example, again, this is just simply going to have um, a, an aceto group, or in other words, uh, a simple ketone on one end, and then an ester group on, or an acetic ester on the other. Okay, so um, <clears throat> again, this carbon site is where the hydrogens are going to be most acidic. Again, your uh, said, you know, your sandwich between two electronegative groups that are pulling electron density away. So it's going to stabilize that negative charge that you would generate from a base. Okay. So again, the base is going to uh, match that that you see on the leaving group of your ester. Okay. And I did a little mustache wave here. Uh, Pringles man comes through. This uh, lone pair comes in and boots off this bromo group. And uh, same kind of business that you saw from that previous example here. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so remember that you're still going to be under basic conditions. So uh, whatever type of methine group that you form here, it's going to lose another hydrogen because it's still going to be under basic conditions. So if it's still under basic conditions, that's when you, uh, <clears throat> after the first step of um, doing a substitution with the bromo group, now you're going to introduce uh, CH3Br. Okay, so this is going to alkylate two times. Okay, now the reason why you need to alkylate twice is because if you don't do so, what's going to happen is this will not become a good leaving group. Okay. Um, if you hydrolyze it with um, acid like I did on the previous example, you're going to get rid of that ethanol, right, or that OTH mi or uh, OETH minus leaving group. And again, um, the lone pair of this carbonyl on the other end, this time this is going to be uh, a ketone carbonyl, those lone pairs are going to actually amend to that hydrogen in a pseudo six ring formation. Okay, so it's going to strip that hydrogen off via hydrogen bonding, and these uh, electrons are going to cascade down and essentially form uh, CO2 gas irreversibly. Okay, so that's going to fly off. Then you're simply just going to do a proton transfer as again uh, facilitated likely by water or or maybe this uh, ethyl acetate or some or sorry ethyl um, ethanol group well I guess at this point we're working with um, acid so in other words you would be using water to facilitate this proton transfer okay um, <clears throat> all right I know this one was a little bit abbreviated um, I think I'll add one more uh, synthesis uh, problem on here so you guys are uh, you know feel like you haven't gotten skimped too much so just hold tight one second I will come up with another example here shortly 
Okay, folks, let's take a look at 21.88 on page 1101. Okay, so the first transformation we're going to get is we have an ester. We're going to hydrolyze that with acid and heat. So that's going to generate. carboxylic acid okay. and uh, if we were to treat that with SOCl2 that is going to turn this from a poor leaving group to an excellent leaving group so we'll have an acid chloride Sorry, the light isn't exactly perfect there. Okay, so SO, or sorry, we have an acid chloride now. We have to at, react this in excess with NH3, something your book got wrong. Uh, remember, you don't want this one-to-one -one because this is just going to get trapped, and you need some kind of base to remove that uh, excess uh, proton there as this amends on and uh, kicks that chlorine off. So in other words, you're going to form a primary amide. I really need to get a whiteboard. Okay. And then once you treat lithium or once you treat an amide with lithium aluminum hydride and um, mild acid follow following a workup. That's going to leave you with so effectively it's going to go through uh, two rounds of sorry H two so it's going to be two rounds of uh, reduction okay. Remember that lithium aluminum hydride is an aggressive reducing agent. Uh, okay, so back to B, where we're starting out with a product from, um, you know, number A or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> so PBr3 and uh, is going to be used as a catalyst. Br2 is going to be used as an electrophile, and uh, effectively you are going to uh, get the substitution here at this alpha carbon. I'm sorry, let me let me restate that. Br2 is not going to be an electrophile. Um, <clears throat> it's going to split apart, um, but Br is essentially just going to split, or is going to um, amend here at the alpha carbon, and then this water is going to come around and, and kick this back. Um, so you, we're... Essentially, what we're going to be left with here is an alpha bromination. Okay, so that's going to lead into uh, Br. Again, amended to the alpha carbon. Now we have <clears throat> a cyano group that's going to behave as a nucleophile which is going to substitute that bromo okay. and then reacting a cyano group with H3O what is that going to give you Remember that just like with uh, cyano groups, when you're, let's say, reacting one out with, let's say, uh, a Grignard reagent, and you do that acid workup, that oxygen is going to work its way in and substitute where that nitrogen is. So, in other words, it's going to oxidize this down to uh, a carbonyl or, or a carboxylic acid. So, in other words, you're going to look at forming this puppy right here. Okay. 
So dicarboxylic acid, if you will. All right, um, so it would be wise and to your advantage to look at C and D for practice and studying, etc. Um, okay, so the next one we're going to be looking at is Diels Alder uh, mechanisms and pericyclic reactions. So um, be sure to read ahead for that once you're finished. Uh, Getting everything prepared for exam two. Sorry about some of the background noise here today, folks. Uh, everything from sirens to our wannabe carpenter above banging on the door floor for some reason to my cats meowing, wanting food or attention or whatever. So thanks for being with it. Um, I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Have a good one.